Have you ever wondered what the world's most infamous dictators like to feast on? Well, stay with us because in today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of dictators and their favorite foods. Welcome back, food enthusiasts, foodies, and history buffs to the Culinary Timeline channel, where we set out together on a journey through culinary traditions, discovering timeless recipes and unraveling the science and history behind the flavors. Today, we have another intriguing and tantalizing episode on our plate, feasting with dictators, their favorite foods revealed. In this episode, we embark on a culinary journey to discover the favorite foods of two of history's most iconic figures and well-known dictators, Emperor Hirohito and Napoleon Bonaparte. Let's take you on a journey into the palates of these iconic figures and discover their favorite dishes. So, are you ready to feast your eyes and taste buds on the secrets behind their preferred dishes? Let's dive right in. Our first dictator on the menu today is Hirohito, the Emperor of Japan. Despite being a controversial figure, Hirohito had a refined taste when it came to food. He was the leader of Imperial Japan during a transformative period in history. But did you know that Hirohito was not only a revered political figure, but also a connoisseur of Japanese cuisine? His favorite dish was none other than sukiyaki, a savory hot pot bursting with flavors. Sukiyaki is a delectable mix of thinly sliced beef, tofu, vegetables, and shirataki noodles, all simmered in a sweet and savory broth made from soy sauce, sugar, and mirin. It's a dish that brings people together around the table, much like Hirohito aimed to unite his nation during his reign. I'm telling you foodies, you'll be shocked, but sukiyaki is more than just a meal in Japanese culture. It's a representation of Japan's communal spirit. Traditionally enjoyed in a group setting, the hot pot symbolizes unity and harmony. Values that Hirohito sought to instill in a nation navigating through tumultuous times. Hirohito's top choice of sukiyaki speaks volumes about his desire to connect with the people and create a shared experience around the dining table. There's no doubt that food has a unique way of fostering unity, transcending political boundaries. How about chowan mushi, a savory Japanese egg custard dish that is another favorite of Hirohito. Chowan mushi is a delicate blend of steamed eggs, dashi broth, and various ingredients like mushrooms, seafood, or chicken. Its silky texture and umami flavors make it a true delight for the taste buds. Hirohito often enjoyed this dish during his formal banquets and special occasions. Along with potatoes either boiled or grilled, pumpkin, cheap fish like soury and mackerel, and broiled eel are also some of the most liked foods and dishes by the famous Japanese emperor. Hirohito also enjoyed persimmons and fried wasps. According to Time, Hirohito was a teetotaler who hated tea and would drink lukewarm water when his guests were drinking stronger drinks. Hirohito did not dislike sushi, a very famous Japanese dish, but it's also true that his favorite dishes did not include sushi very often, which I think we can all agree seems a little strange. Don't you think, guys? He also ate the plain buckwheat noodles and mackerel, locally made. Interestingly though, his breakfasts consisted of mostly oatmeal, toast, and bacon. He would then have chicken or steak for lunch and only consent to more authentic Japanese dishes at supper. On the other side of the world, Napoleon's love for chicken marengo is equally fascinating. This dish, born out of necessity on the battlefield, became a symbol of victory and celebration for the French. Chicken marengo reflects the resourcefulness and adaptability of the French people. It's a reminder that even in the face of adversity, the French found a way to turn a simple meal into a culinary masterpiece, mirroring Napoleon's ability to transform challenges into triumphs. Preparing the chicken in garlic, adding tomatoes and embellishing the plate with a fried egg and boiled shrimp while adding some cognac to it, it's fair to say that Napoleon loved it very much. He's credited with the saying, an army marches on its stomach as well as fostering the idea of canning as a way to preserve food, especially during war times, for the army and soldiers. One of his all-time favorite dishes is canard à l'orange, duck with orange sauce. Canard à l'orange is a classic French dish that combines succulent roasted duck with a tangy and citrusy orange sauce. The tender meat paired with the vibrant flavors of orange creates a marriage of tastes that is simply irresistible. Napoleon savored this dish, often indulging in it during his victorious campaigns. Lobster thermidor, another famous food liked by Napoleon, is a classical dish where lobster meat is sliced, sauced, and then served in the lobster tail shell. Lobster thermidor was an undoubtedly unique recipe made by splitting the lobster in half lengthways, seasoning, and then being gently grilled, 
removing the flesh from the shell and cutting into fairly thick slices. A sauce made predominantly with cream and finished with a little English mustard is poured into the bottom of the two half shells before placing the slices of lobster neatly on top and coating with more of the rich sauce. It's then glazed lightly in a hot oven or under the salamander. Napoleon's breakfast consisted mostly of sorrel pottage or any other refreshing pottage with breasts of mutton, boned and well grilled, served with a clear gravy, a roast chicken or two griskins. Sometimes a plate of pulse was also served. He also preferred a good soup, mostly hot, and a good piece of boiled beef in contrast to all the complicated and succulent dishes which his cooks would make for him. Boiled or poached eggs, an omelette, a cutlet, a fillet of beef, broiled breast of lamb or chicken wing, lentils, beans in a salad were all dishes which were often served at his table. For dinner, he usually had pottage again, a remove, two entrees, a roast and two side dishes of sweetmeats or pastry, famously known by the name of Napoleon pastries, of which he was very fond. Always served on a plate, large pieces of beef, mutton, fresh pork, sometimes goose, a turkey or suckling pig. This guy really knew how to eat. In fact, he was fond of the great French famous wine and champagne as well. He usually drank a lot when having a long sitting with his fellow army persons or friends or family members. Madeira, Tenerife and Constantia were where wines were usually supplied from to the suite of the emperor. When the emperor did not feel well, he usually took tea or hot lemonade or chicken broth. There's no doubt the flavours of all of these dishes are out of this world. The sweetness of the sukiyaki and the aromatic richness of the chicken merengue combine in a symphony of tastes that truly transcend borders. Indeed, as we conclude our gastronomic journey, it's important to remember that the favourite foods of dictators may seem trivial, but they offer a unique glimpse into the personalities and tastes. Exploring their culinary preferences helps us understand these historical figures from a different perspective. My fellow gastronauts, it's incredible to think that these two leaders, worlds apart, shared a common love for food that not only satisfied their taste buds, but also reflected the cultural tapestries of their respective nations. And there you have it, foodies. Our journey through the palates of Hirohito and Napoleon has been nothing short of a historical feast. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and hit that subscribe button for more unique explorations into the intersection of history and cuisine. Let us know in the comments if you have any suggestions or want us to explore other historical figures' favourite foods. Stay tuned for more intriguing culinary adventures and until next time, keep exploring, keep cooking and keep feasting with history and keep savouring the world of flavours. <laughs>